me again guys yeah back back with you again pestering you sorry um so here we go then this is going to be this video is going to cover um basically the beginning of this b52 thing um we're going to first of all look at the kit and we're going to have a look at some tools as well in fact no we'll look at the tools first so then i can say to you um if you're not new to the hobby you don't want to see me rambling on for i don't know half an hour 40 minutes or whatever on about tools then um just fast forward so when you see the model appear on the screen if you fast forward when you see the model appear then you know that is the start of the review if you don't because i'm going to cover i'm going to cover tools sanders paints little bits and pieces everything and basically just go through everything that um people might want to get to get themselves started so um Without further ado, let's get on the bench and have a look and we'll start looking at some tools and as I say, just fast forward if you don't want to see that and uh, when you see the model appear then um, then you know you can start watching from there if you're interested. If you're not, fast forward and watch something else. Who knows? <laughs> see you in a minute. Okay, so tools. Now, as a beginning modeler, you're probably going to be tempted to go and reach for the kitchen knife, your old wire cutters at your toolbox and um, a sheet of sandpaper that you use to rub down an old cabinet. Well, although you can use those, and in the past that's what people did use, you may not get very good results or you're going to make life a lot harder for yourself. These days there are many, many products available for people to do modelling with. And to be honest, if you're a brand new guy to modelling or girl to modelling and, you, and you're, you, know, you, you, you just don't know where to start, Here's a simple guide that will get you going. Um, you know, you can get away with a, a Stanley knife and a piece of old sandpaper, but I'm going to show you the basics you want to think about getting. If it's a hobby you think you want to you want to get into and sort of carry on with for the rest of your life. Um, if you're just building an odd one or two models just to hang on your, your kid's bedroom ceiling or something, then you may not want to invest. But if it's a hobby that you think you're going to get back into or pick up, then a few basic tools to get you started and then just add as you go along. I've done many reviews of many special things that are available and little gadgety bits and pieces, you know, and th in this day and age you could spend an absolute fortune on tools. I'm going to show you what I think you actually need to get going. So the first thing we're going to do is get our sprues and we're going to want to cut the parts off the plastic. Now, a lot of people used to just snap the parts off. That is definitely a no-no, especially with a lot of modern kits now with the really fine, tiny parts. So you want to get yourself some cutters. Now, you can get the really cheap ones like these, and they're perfectly good for what they do. Now, you can see these are a complete mess. Because they're so cheap, I use them for cutting wire, so they're actually completely ruined. Now, these are available in sort of tool sets you'll see on Amazon um, and various places. R Ravel do these tool sets. Um, and, and all, all sorts of other people, you'll get this and a knife and a rule and stuff like that. I would suggest probably buying the stuff individually because as with most sets, you get a lot of stuff you don't need and some of the stuff you do need isn't in there. So, um, and also, you know, with, with your knives and stuff, really, it's best, I think, to start using scalpels and stuff. Excuse my fingernails, that I, I bite them and it's disgusting. And I've just been spraying some olive drab paint, so my nails are now dirty. So these cutters here, um, these are available pretty much anywhere you go. And they'll, they'll get you going, they're absolutely fine. What you want to look for, is I can show you on here, on the ends, if you look at a normal pair of wire cutters, they're chamfered on both sides. Okay, if you look at these, they're flat on one side and then they're just ground to a... A sharp point so when they close they're flat you can see there they're flat they don't have a, a bevel on the back okay like a pair of wire cutters would be beveled on both sides reason for that is you want to get in close to the parts and snip them the other thing is this does an action where it actually it's um it, it's cutting the plastic and it's pushing it to one side okay the other ones that have a bevel on both sides it's kind of ripping it apart so you put a lot more stress in the parts you're likely to break them so a cheap pair like that absolutely fine if it's something you know you're going to get into and you're going to stick with it for a while <clears throat> these are what i would recommend as the best bang for your buck um these are the tamiya nippers these are the 74035s and these are the 74123s I prefer the 123s. I thought I'd give the 035s a go. You can see the, the cutting tips on them are shorter. Okay, that they're shorter. Um, 
but they're also they're stronger so they don't have such a fine angle ground into them which hence makes them not so good these tend to be a little weak um, I've got another pair over here you can see I've actually managed to chip chip the back of them there um, so I would thoroughly recommend for the money the 74123s or the 74035s and also shop around. There's places like Plaza in Japan where you get these for like 15, 16 pounds. I've seen them for over 30 on um, Amazon. So I've seen the, um, like UMP do them for 30 pounds. I think e-models have got them for about 25. But then when you start adding the postage on and stuff, you know, it's sometimes worth going to Japan and getting them. Um, but you will probably get caught for customs, so there's another problem. Um, but anyway, you know, you can get your um, what they call God Hands, and I've seen those for a hundred quid. There's some I'm looking at at the moment on Amazon, which I can't remember the make of them now, but they're £21. They've got red handles on them. They look the same as these. And the real problem is, is when you look at the reviews, it's none of them are kind of, yeah, they're OK. They're not quite as good as Tamiya, but, you know they're all right or they're better than Tamiya they're not as good as God Hand it's there's there's a couple of reviews that says they're absolute garbage and there's a couple of reviews that says they're absolutely brilliant so you don't know what to believe I suppose with Amazon at least you can get them and send them back so I think I'll get some and review them and see what they're like but anyway so that's the uh, that's your cutters out of the way so once you've got your parts off the sprues you want to clean them up so you're going to need knives now these are what I recommend this is what I've been using for, well, these are what I've been using for God knows how many years. Um, and they're the only two blades I use. That's a 10 and a 10A, so it's easy to remember. This one, the radius blade, is great for cutting photo etch and stuff. Um, it's got a bit of glue on it there. Um, but but it's, it's also good for shaving, for shaving away plastic. You'll see when we're doing modelling, if you want to shave away some ejector pin marks or whatever. And then this one with the point, it's great for getting into corners and cleaning off and scraping edges and stuff cutting your um, your sprue nibs away so basically that's what I would recommend a lot of people like to use the retractable knives I personally don't rate them I think they're too big and bulky um, some people like to use the exacto type knives with the round handles this type of handle here that I've got a glue looper in um, I don't tend to like them because they roll off the bench these you put them down and they just stay where they are trouble is when you've got stumps like me and you bite your nails it makes them harder to pick up but some people wrap tape around them and stuff so you know, th th this is what I prefer. Um, blade changing is really easy, you know, and the other thing, there's nothing to come undone with these. These can come, you know, the ends can come loose and stuff. So, you know, you pay your money, you take your choice. It's horses for courses. These are what I prefer. Um, nothing to say there's anything wrong with these. That's just what I prefer. So there you go. That's your knives taken care of. So you've got your parts off the sprue. You've trimmed away the sprue nab. Sprue nab, sprue nib. Now you need to look at sanding. So sanding this this is basically here now it's going to sound like i'm promoting this company i'm not by all means go anywhere you like to buy your stuff but this company here you'll see on the top of the board i've got a sign here premium hobbies uh based in western supermare and they sell a lot of products um and they actually make these holders as well now unfortunately they don't ship to the usa but this is basically their all-in-one holder and this holds one of each of the range of sanders they sell which is a really nice touch. So you've got all your sanders there, easy to pick up. You just grab it like that and you can pick it up. Um, so you've got all your different sanders and you're going to see me using all of these in the build. Now we've got these sanders here, which are called matadors and they come in a pack like this. Now this is just a pack of 600. When you get your starter pack, you get the eight. So you get four of each grade from 400 up to, I think it's 7,000. Let's have a look. Yeah, 7,000 grit, so that's almost like cardboard, it's so smooth. So um, so that's that one, basically taken care of. I'm trying to do this around the camera so I can't get it back in. So there's, there's that one. They are absolutely brilliant. If there's, if there's one set of sanders you buy for modelling, they're the ones I'd buy. They're absolutely brilliant. They last, I've just changed this 400, and I've been using them for, I don't know, six months. They are absolutely brilliant. This, this 600 gets a lot of use. You can wash them off in water. They're, they're waterproof. You clean them off on your jeans or whatever. They are fantastic. Um, I wish they did like a 100 grit, whatever. So when you want your coarser ones, you come along to these, and these are your, these are called zebra sticks. Again, they sell these at, at uh, Premium Hobbies down in Western Supermare. And these go from 100 up to 800. They tend to wear out quite fast, 
but they kind of this is what I said in my review they wear down really quickly but then they stay so it's like the 220 you use it and within no time at all it's more like a, a 400 but then it stays like a 400 for a long time it's ever so strange but they um, they do tend to wear out fast but then they just wear down and then stay um, for instance I haven't replaced any of these and this 400 here you can see when you compare it to that 400 there how much it's changed colour and you can see all the white grits are coming off but I still use it as a sanding stick and it's probably more like a I don't know a 600 or an 800 now absolutely brilliant um, really really love them and these one of the problems people make a lot of people just buy these soft sanding sponges ones like these these are the floury ones they're bloody brilliant nothing wrong with them at all but not really any good for if you're trying to sand something square because it will always follow what's already there whereas a hard sanding stick will take down the the nub if I can try and demonstrate that to you um, if we've got say say we've got something in, and we've got a lump we want trying to sand off like this okay if we come in with a soft sanding stick as you sand it backwards and forwards the soft sanding stick will deform around it okay so you'll end up with that will become that okay or even you can actually get that you get cutting down underneath either side so basically what you'll do is you'll turn that that shape there you'll turn into exaggerated you'll turn into that okay if you use something hard it can't deform so all it can do is scrape away at that and you end up with flat okay the pen's run out isn't it so um yeah go for your hard sanding sticks you need sponges as well but you need hard sanding sticks more i think so there we go that's the zebra sticks that's those taken care of now they also do these sponges which again are fantastic um, I, can't, I can't remember what these are called now if you look on the site it's obvious what they're called again you get this starter set of eight of them and they go from I think it's 400 I can't remember what the grade is now on this one maybe it's 200 I can't remember maybe it's 220 um, but basically they go all the way up to 4000 and that is basically like a polishing stick for doing your canopies and stuff and it's slightly narrower than the others so hence the slot in the in the holder is slightly narrower um, but they are fantastic for doing like for sanding round articles if you're trying to remove seams from fuselage or whatever you know you start off with your hard stick and then you polish with a sponge but they are very very flexible but they retain their shape they don't go all wrinkly some some of these sanding sticks they tend to all wrinkle up and crease on one side um, these haven't done that as of yet and then also over here we've got these PE sanders and these are basically um, they're made by Infini and you've got a 10 millimeter there We've got a five millimeter, a three millimeter, a two millimeter, I think it is two millimeter, yes. And then we've got the two here, which I haven't even used yet, which are pointed. So what you do is you get your um, sanding sheets like these here. This is an elastic sanding film. They also do a self adhesive um, and you basically glue them on. You glue them onto there. So um, that's what these are. So basically you, you cut these off okay you've got a backing on there and you glue them onto here so that gives you a very very hard very very skinny sanding stick which is great for like when you're trying to remove the seams from undercarriage legs and okay stuff. so that's that um that's that dealt with the sanding you can also get for premium hobbies mine are blue but if you buy them they'll be gray you can get these little sanding blocks um that you can they're all numbered as you can see with the grades on there um basically it's a hard flat sander so again you've got a flat sanding medium there um, and then you get these self adhesive um, pads that you can stick onto the back of them so that's pretty cool uh, I think he's redesigning this to make them fit that better to fit these sheets better and then you can also get here we've got these elastic sheets which they're not actually um, self adhesive but they do have a backing on them and they're very thin and you can stretch them over shape so if you've got something you know which you you, you want to um, sand a contour into it you could put that sanding sheet on the on the mail and then sand the um, the part using the mail with that so that's a, a benefit there okay so we've got all our parts sanded now we're all cleaned up and we're ready to start gluing them together so we need to look at adhesives now if you remember back years ago everybody used to use tube glue these days people tend to use liquid cements again I've got this in a premium hobbies holder 
and we've got the Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting, which is the light green colour, normal Tamiya Extra Thin, and then this bottle here, you can see I've got Plastic Wild written on there. This is an old Tamiya Thin bottle, um, Tamiya Extra Thin bottle, and I've basically got um, Plastic Wild in there, which is this product here, uh, which is really, really good for like ABS. It's a very, very uh, hot glue. It's made by Plastruct, I believe. Um, and it's very, very good for, for using on sheet styrene and stuff. Very, very good adhesive. It's very, very hot. And then you've got these two here, which is the uh, Mr. Hobby Cement S and the Cement SP. This is my new favourite glue. It really does. It's, it's very, I don't know what the whole purpose of it is, what the whole selling point over this one is, but it seems to be a lot quicker drying, um, but it's also very, very strong. And also the good thing with these is, if you look at the Tamiya ones, the brush you get is very, very fine and pointy, whereas these are a lot more chunky. So if you're doing something like, you know, gluing a couple of hull halves together or something, you really want to get a lot of glue in there. You know, this brush is going to get more in than that one is. So that's your glues there. But I would recommend if you're going to buy one, that one, that is your go to glue. That one there, Tamiya Extra Thin, the Ordinary. Don't just get stuck with the quick setting because when it comes to small parts and stuff, um, it, the trouble is with it, it dries so fast, so you know you might get issues where you want to just put a drop of glue into a hole and put a, a pin in or something. By the time you get in there with the pin, that's dry. So, you know, that one is the one to go for. If you don't get Tamiya in your region of the world, get one of these or both of these or whatever. Then you also come up to, um, you'll see me use this if you've got some like big tank halves or, or maybe fuselage halves perhaps not fuselage halves, but wing sections, tail sections. I will tend to use this stuff here. This is the Revell Contactor Professional. Um, this is like a, a thick, a thicker version of these. The beauty of it is you've got a pin applicator on here. I haven't used this for a long time. You've got a pin applicator on there, which has got a tiny hole in the end. And basically you can go around the edge of say whatever it is you're doing and it puts a bead of cement down and it stays wet whereas if you put a, a layer of this the, the liquid cement down paint it around it just dries out so um this this is quite good biggest problem with this is um it, it's a fairly hot solvent glue so you end up with quite a gooey sticky mess on the joint which will take longer to go hard and we'll talk about that when we actually come to building um, you've also got your option of using super glues and stuff which i tend to steer away from I'm not going to talk about any product names, but what I will say is this bottle, this type of dispenser, I find absolutely useless. Uh, this type here with the screw on cap is much better. However, you will get situations like that where the cap has glued itself on. So what you have to do then is take the whole thing off and pour some out or whatever, use a pipette, get some out. But um, that's a big problem with these bottles. These, I'm not even going to open this on here because I know what happened. You've got the, the cap is there and then you've got this cap here which is on upside down when you first get it and you snap it off and then you stick it on. Every time you pull this cap off you, you form suction whatever and you get a drip of glue come out on your fingers or whatever. Um, I find then I have to stick a pin in it. I really don't like these dispensers. The other thing is they knock over really easy. You know, the bigger they are the easier they fall over. Just I just don't like, uh, the glue is fantastic, but I don't like the dispensers. It's the same as MRP paints, fantastic paint, but the dispensers are just a waste of time. Um, so there's your super glues out the way, there's your glues out the way. That's basically that. Right, let's have a breather. Okay, so we've got our model together now. So we'd say we've got the fuselage halves glued together, and we want to start looking at the seam down in the middle, and we start doing a little bit of sanding, and we notice we need to do some filling and stuff. So we need to start looking at some fillers. Now, there's lots of different fillers on the market. Um, you've got your, basically, these are, pretty, sorry, these are pretty much the same thing. You've got your Mr. Hobby White Putty and your Tamiya Basic Putty. And they're basically just solvent-type fillers that bite into the plastic and dry. Um, they shrink when they dry, uh, so you have to leave them on there for a while. One of the other biggest problems with using fillers and solvents and stuff in, in these seams is that they, over time, they will sink back. When I say over time, I mean like 48, 72 hours. So you do your model today, you rub down the seam, you put some filler in it, you sand it down lovely and flat, prime it, put some paint on it, put your decals on, you go to bed at night and you think, oh, I'll look at that model in the morning, and you come down and there it is, a great big line down the back where it's all shrunk back. And that's what happens with solvent fillers. 
it, it unfortunately is a problem with the hobby. So you can use these type of fillers here, which are basically, um, this is a, a Viejo one. There's lots of different ones you get. It's just, it's called plastic putty. I actually think it's just tile grout. Um, you basically put it in the joint, wipe it over with water and it's, uh, it sorts it out. But I never use it. I don't like it at all. I don't think it's, it doesn't stick to the plastic. It just sits on the surface. So I don't, rec I don't rate this stuff at all. And it's not having got a Viejo here. It's, I'm, I'm talking about these type of plastic putties. They, they're not solvent, they're water soluble. Basically anything that's water soluble that's going onto plastic is gonna come off. Yeah, it it's, stands to reason. Um, with one exception, and that is Mr. Hobby Paint. It doesn't seem to come off. So basically you've got these two here if, you, if you're using a putty. If you have got particularly big gaps to fill, I tend to use this. And this is an old Tamiya paint pot with car body filler in it. Okay, now it's not the ordinary body filler that you would use on a on a great big hole or a dent in the wing of your car. This is called stopper. It's the final surface fine filler. Um, and it's what they use to get rid of sandy marks or just for the, the final bit, you know. So you use this and you use a hardener. Um, you'll see me use this in builds. I'm doing a build now which is going to be going up very, very shortly. Um, and you'll see me use it in that. So, um, yeah, I recommend this stuff highly. But you need to be wearing a mask when you're sanding it and probably a mask when you're putting it on as well. So that's that's your fillers taken care of. But probably everybody that knows me and knows my channel will know that there's one filler I've missed out. This one, Mr. Surfacer. I've done a whole video dedicated to this stuff. I absolutely love it. Um, it's basically, it's like a, I wouldn't say it's solvent based because it doesn't attack the plastic. It's like an acrylic but it's stronger than acrylic. It certainly sticks to the surface a lot better. It can be sanded. Um, it can be uh, gone over with some um, alcohol or, or Tamiya thinners or Mr. Cutter Leavening thinners, whatever, and you can remove it afterwards without damaging the plastic. Some modelers use cellulose thinners to remove it. The problem I find with that is cellulose thinners will attack the plastic. So you'll see me use this in pretty much every single build I do. I use it for everything. They, it comes in different grades, 500 up to up to 1500. If you're just going to buy one bottle, buy the thousand. I, I tend not to, not to use much else at all. Um, basically, if you want it a bit thicker than a thousand, just pull some up on the side of the jar, and there it is. It's thicker. It will go thicker within five minutes. If you want it thinner, just to count some out, add some Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners to it, and you've got it thinner. You can even thin it down and spray it through an airbrush. This stuff is amazing. You'll see me use it a lot, as I say. If you've got some, you know, if you've got a lot of rivet detail around the inner edge of your wing and you want to do the wing route, you can put this in there, let it dry, let it go hard, come in with a cotton bud with some Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners on and just wipe it over and the, the all the excess Mr. Surface will be removed outside of the joint. You won't have sanded away or damaged any of your rivet detail and this will be in there doing its job and it won't shrink back. So absolutely love that stuff. Absolutely brilliant. So... Right, we've got our model now, we've got it all filled, all the seams are done, we're going to paint it. So the first thing we need to do is look at primers. So you can buy your aerosol type primers like this one. You could also use your Halfords plastic primers if you're in the UK. Um, I can tell you that Halfords plastic primers and Halfords ordinary primers are absolutely fine. Just don't put it on heavy, put it on light coats, don't let it, you know, don't let it pool on there or, or anything because it may attack the plastic. But um, you know, this tends to be quite an expensive way of buying your primers in these aerosols. And as you can see, I've used this once for a tiny job. It's still practically full. Um, I tend not to use it because I use an airbrush. So if you're going to go for brush painting and you're not going to go into airbrush modelling, then sort of discard what I'm about to tell you. These two primers here, these three primers here, this is the MRP um, Fine Surface Black, Fine Surface Grey. They also do a white, I believe. Um, these are a solvent-based uh, primer. They are absolutely fantastic. They're very, very thin. You tend to use quite a lot of it. The dispensers are awful. You can see the paint all down the side of the bottles. There, You need to take the caps off and use a, a pipette or something to dispense it. These, they, They've tried to make a bottle where you can pour the paint out but the trouble is when you try and pour it it doesn't pour out and it sort of just um I don't know the words for it but it sort of it just goes along when, when it's upside down it just runs along 
the sides it doesn't come out it just sticks to the surface and runs out much like a windowsill does <laughs> so um yeah not very good at all but the actual paint itself is amazing it does stink you need an extractor you need a mask you need to make sure there's no other people in the room no pets in the room whatever but um the final product is just incredible if you're not going to go to all the health and safety hazards this one here is also very good um this is one shot mig primer it's actually badger steinal res so badger is an american company uh, this stuff is made in America and what they do is these companies buy it and relabel it. So you've got MIG one shot. I think there's an ammo one. Uh, sorry. Um, um, what's their names? An AK one. I think there's an AK one shot type primer as well. Uh, then you've got the UMP primers, which are exactly the same product. So just shop around and, and look for the best prices. But this stuff as an acrylic based primer. It's amazing. Um, but you do need to make sure you shake it really, really well or you'll find you get halfway down and it's starting to thicken up and you can't actually spray it. Um, I think you'll find that you can use UMP thinners to thin it. I'm not sure what else you can use to thin it. But it says on here, professional water-based acrylic polyurethane. Don't be misguided by that. The Viejo um, primers are also polyurethane and they tend to peel very easily. Although I've been told if you thin them with Mr. Color Lovely Thinners, they don't. So something I've yet to try. So if you're going to go for the acrylic primer route, that is by far the best. You can get all loads of different colors. Have a look at, um, have, I think Premium Hobby still sells it. If Have a look at the um, the UMP website, the Ultimate Modeling Products. Look at their website uh, and they sell their own brand of it. So have a look on there. But the, um, the MRP paints, yeah, brilliant. There's lots and lots of different primers you can get. This one here, this is the... Um, Ravel Aquacolor Basic. Now, the funniest thing with this one is the smell. If you don't have a bottle of this, next I can't even open the top's glued on. Next time you're in a model shop and you see it, open it up and smell it. It actually smells gorgeous. It's it it's, must be dangerous for kids because if they smelt it, they would drink it. Um, it smells that nice. So be careful around that with that one around kids. Um, there's lots and lots of different primers you can use. I've got loads of them here, but um, basically they're off your shelf. They're the ones you can use. Um, and of course, you've got your rattle cans as well. So if you're going to go down the airbrush route, get yourself some of them. Uh, as far as painting goes, if you're not going to go down the airbrush route and you're brush painting, I would seriously recommend going with enamels. You get a much better finish. You get more time to work with it. Definitely don't buy your Tamiya paints. They're not very good at all with uh, brush painting. Um, they tend to sort of go down. And I, I always... Um, term it trying to paint brush paint with tamiya paints is like trying to drag a, a wet slug around an oily uh, slate it's just like the, the brush just kind of lifts what's already there and just forms a an oily mess on it's, it's really weird um, you can get a retarder to go in it and it actually helps it uh, if it's fine or smaller detail as you're doing you can thin it with some mr cut 11 and thinners and it will brush paint absolutely fine but really for finer stuff, you're better off with your enamels. So if you aren't going down the airbrush route, I would recommend seriously either this one or the Revell Aqueous. Now, Aqua Color, this stuff is fine on the brush. Um, you can thin it to high heaven and it will go down absolutely fine. Biggest problem with both of these is drying times. The Revell Aqua Color just seems to take forever to dry, as do the, the um, enamels. But the other problem with the enamels is they don't smell very nice at all. If you actually clean your brushes off in a paper towel and put the paper towel in the bin, the whole room will stink the next day. Um, so that's one of the problems with the, the enamel and the enamel thinners. It does smell. This one doesn't really smell at all. Um, and you've got the, uh, there's the aqua colour mix here. There's a special thinners for it, uh, which again smells absolutely gorgeous. Be careful around the kids. But it's, um, yeah, it's... Uh, very good mix works very well together you can actually also thin it with water if you brush painting but um as i say it takes a while to dry so if you're going to build this b52 of me and your brush painting either one of these um and you you'll be able to brush paint your camouflage on absolutely fine but you need to thin it back put it on nice and thin get yourself a nice big soft brush you know something like this one here um and, and then you can brush your brush paint to your heart's content and uh, and, and end up with a really really lovely looking job so there's your brush painting paints. The other paint that's quite good on the brush is Viejo. 
Um, this is model air, but don't worry, it's it's fine on the brush. Uh, I use it. I tend to the only time I tend to use it is for detail work. Viejo's biggest problem is its adherence to the plastic. If it's not going on a previously primed surface, if it's just on bare plastic, it just rubs off with your finger really, really easily. Uh, so that's, in my, in my opinion, that's one of the biggest problems with it. Then you've got your um, aqueous uh, hobby colour from, this is the old, old design bottle, this is the later design. Um, you've got, um, ignore the colours, but they're basically th these are very, very good on the brush as well. They can be thin with water, but they're better off really being thinned with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners and used with an airbrush. But um, I I'm led to believe you can actually brush paint with them as well. I've done detail painting with them, but actual brush painting, you know, a chassis or an aeroplane wing, I don't know. But um, give them a go. I'm sure they're very, very good. Uh, be careful with, with when you're Mr. buying your Mr. Hobby paints. Don't get this one. You've got Mr. Hobby colour and Mr. Colour. Um, the, one of the best ways to see is these Mr. Colours tend to just have the two numbers, I think, and these generally have the three. But you don't really want to be buying. If it's got a C, if it's got a C on it, uh, C33 this is, and there's no C on there, be very, very careful. Um, make sure you get this one. This one is a solvent-based paint. It's absolutely disgusting, the smell. Um, and you need breathing kit and extractors and stuff with it. It's awful. Likewise with the Tamiya paints. I've just thought, be careful with this one. This is the Tamiya lacquer paints, not to be confused with the ordinary Tamiya paints. These can be thinned with water. Uh, you're better off thinning them with Tamiya thinners or any other acrylic thinners. These are a lacquer paint. Again, they absolutely stink to high heaven. Uh, so, you know, if you're in the family room, you're using the family kitchen or you're spraying in your bedroom, whatever, you really want to stay away from these lacquer paints because you don't want that in your room when you go to bed or whatever or having the rest of the family in there. So try and stick to these. Um, and by the way, I would seriously recommend getting an airbrush. They don't cost very much these days. You don't need to spend a million pounds and you'll always get a better job with an airbrush on large areas than you will with brush painting. So there's our paints. Okay, so we're in the closing stages now. A couple of little bits and pieces of accessories. Get yourself some good point to good. I just read out what it says. Some good quality toothpicks. Avoid the cheap. These here, these cheap things, um, they're not very good at all. You can see they're very, very much in size, but they're also very weak. And they see this one here. Here we go. That one there. It's just all splintery and split open on the end. I mean, the last thing you want to do is put something on there, paint it, and then find you've got this piece of wood sticking in the paint. So um, get yourself some good quality ones like these here. Um, you know, you can see they're all forming the same shape. They're good quality and they're, they're fairly strong. Those other cheap ones, they snap very easy. So, you, you, you know, I've had them where you're holding parts on them and you just move the part and it just snaps off in the middle of painting. You can't put your airbrush down. It's like, what are we going to do? <laughs> so get yourself some cotton buds. Um, fortunately for the planet, cotton buds now all come with paper stems, which is great. Um, not so great for the modeler because the paper stem... Uh, when you're using it wet, just gets all soggy and the end goes all floppy. Whereas the old plastic stems you used to just keep on using your cotton bud until it had nothing left on it. But these days you, they just get floppy and you know wear out. So, but you can get them. Um, avoid the cheap ones. Um, I always go for the Johnsons. I use the tub when it's finished as a bin. Get the Johnsons cotton buds. Um, a lot of the cheaper ones, like the ones you find in ASDA and Tesco's and everything, they tend to um, they're very very fluffy. And as soon as you rub something, you just end up with a ball of fur stuck to your model. So, um, Right, and also paper towel. <laughs> yep, yeah, I'm going to talk about paper towel. This is Blitz. Get yourself a decent paper towel for your modelling. Um, the cheap stuff falls apart. Um, you hold it in your hand, you wipe a paintbrush, and it all soaks through and gets on your fingers. If you get the good quality stuff like this, uh, you don't get used very much of it at all. I mean, I've got a piece here in my spray booth which I've been using for ages. And you can see, you know, you, you, you rub your brush in it and yeah, you've got a bit coming through there, but it doesn't come through and get on your fingers and everything. And um, it's, it's, it just lasts much, much longer and it's good to have a good quality product. Um, right, so we've got our model done. Um, oh, the other thing we need to look at is tweezers. Get yourself some tweezers, um, get some like this with a, a rounded point and get some like this with a good point on the end. Um, you don't need to spend a million pounds on tweezers, but uh, I did just do a test on some, which are these, which are really good. Non-adhesive tweezers, they come from premium hobbies as well, but they are £12.50 a pair. 
but they don't stick to anything. They don't stick to tapes and stuff. So when you want to use masking tape and put it down, it puts it down instead of all, everything sticking to these. So they're really good. But um, yeah, you want some tweezers for your, for your smaller parts. So we've got our model done. It's all painted and everything. Now we need to look at putting decals on or transfers or whatever. So what you want to get yourself is a nice pair of scissors, uh, a brush which is dedicated to decals and some setting solvents. So this brush here, is a, again, this is a premium hobbies holder. And these two products here, Set and Sol, are really the go-to um, items for applying decals. You put the set on first, lay the decal down, another drop of set, and then you put the sole on afterwards. Um, now there are lots of other products. I've just had this one come through from Premium Hobbies, which is a brand new product. I haven't tried it yet. I've translated it. Basically you put it on before you put the decal on and then you mop it up afterwards. So it says it does not soften the decal. So I don't really know. It's probably good for large areas, but if you want it to go into the detail, I don't think it'll do it much good, but we'll try that. There's also this one here, which again, I've never tried. Um, Feels like a glass jar, that one actually, rather than, yeah, it's glass jar rather than plastic. Uh, so there's your ammo MIG decal set. So the UMP range is also apparently very good, uh, although I haven't tried it. Um, and then you also want to get yourself some nice scissors and dedicate them just to decals because you want them really sharp. Um, some people tend to cut their decals with a knife. Problem being is, and I will show you here, when you cut, let me grab a better pen. Let's grab a pencil. When you, if this is your sheet here, imagine this is your sheet now. If you cut it with a knife, what you tend to do is this. Oops. What you tend to do is this. Okay, so there's your, there's your paper there, and you've cut down with a knife. And what you've done, you've pushed the edges up. So if you're cutting a decal right on the edge, you actually push the edge of it up. Whereas when you cut with scissors, you're shearing it. So you basically don't get that raised edge. So it's good to use de scissors for cutting out decals rather than using a knife, especially if you're cutting the carrier film in that way. So that's something worth remembering. And as I say, I've got a little holder here. The other thing that's very important, have a dedicated brush for decals for using with these. Um, I learned the hard way once. I just picked up a brush, any old brush from my... Um, from my... Uh, from my little brush pot, uh, pot that I keep them in and it had obviously previously been used with some solvent paint and there was obviously still some solvent in it and it just destroyed the decal so keep a brush dedicated for this and don't use it for anything else okay um, this holder is designed for holding all those bits and pieces so uh, and you've also got the, the the pots on the end for putting the lids in so um there's my recommendation for decals so that's what I would use um, and one other final thing we haven't talked about I'm going to be doing a complete video on it on a well I'll be doing a, a video in within this lot with for the beginners but basically sprue goo and this is um, basically an old Tamiya bottle with some Tamiya glue in it and I've put some uh, plastic plastic sheet in there scraps of plastic sheet just let them melt and that is a, a filler so that is sprue goo filler okay so very very good two big downsides stinks takes ages to dry so you'll find that most things that take ages to dry stink and most things that dry really quickly don't but the things that dry really quickly generally don't work very well like this i don't find this works very well at all people are going to shake me down i know it's just my opinion try it for yourself see what you'll see what i mean so um there we go guys that is basically an intro into everything you want to be looking at getting to start modeling but as a bare minimum to get yourself going you need to get yourself some cutters some sanding sticks and a knife oh and obviously your glue and um and that'll get you going right so here we go you've got the box here and um, what i've done i've gone through my two kits and i've basically taken the tattiest box and the tattiest instructions and put all the nice stuff in the other box I've also noticed that my other kit has got two right hand side fuselage halves so I'm going to have to sort something there. I'm either going to use my old half the green um, fuselage half on this one or I'm going to um, have to look around for another left hand fuselage half so <laughs> we'll see. But anyway uh, I've got this kit here ready to go so uh, what I'm going to do is get this box over here out the way and then I can um, do a review for you so we'll quickly go through the instructions now here's the old decal sheet here 
Um, as you can see, this is probably going to be shot. It's got 1989 on it there. The kit is actually 1995. Um, but they're probably just going to fall apart as soon as they see water. So I've ordered a couple of new sets from um, from Hannans. There is a set on there. It's like two pound ninety or something. So uh, yeah, worth getting. So let's just have a quick look at this um, instruction manual first of all. So good old monogram style. I mean, I, I love the old monogram models. It's it's really funny when you think about it. All the the forty eight scale bombers, the B seventeen, the B twenty four, the B twenty nine, the B twenty six, the B twenty five. The shape of them is all proper. They they got their models right, you know. And then along comes AMT, and they completely mess up the B fifty two nose and the tail, and get the wing and hedral wrong and everything. You know, it's awful. Um, and then, you know, now you've got a model collector come along and make them with all the fantastic detail and everything, but all oh, there's so many shape issues and that. You know, it's crazy. This stuff. If this was you know nineteen sixty eight, and they got it wrong. And I swear. It's because these models were mastered by craftsmen, you know, who actually sculpted something to make the mould. Um, and these days it's just all 3D CAD and everything and everybody thinks they're so fantastically clever because they can use these CAD packages. Well, they're not artists. They're just, they're just good on a computer keyboard. And um, I think that's why we're seeing so many errors in modern kits because everybody's just, you know, tippy-tappy doing everything on keyboards. There's no art in it anymore. So, um, yeah, rant over. So this is a good old set of instructions, instructions where you've got all your um, call outs here. A, B, C, D, you've got the codes. And then as you go through the build, you'll get different codes called out, like you can see here, for different colours. So um, there's your paint call outs there. We've got, um, if airplane is to be assembled with retracted landing gear, you can emit steps one, two and six. So there we go. So obviously we're going to start off with landing gear. Some health and safety stuff up here. Um, Monogram models, des de planes, um, Illinois. Um, so I don't know if that's des planes or d planes or whatever. Uh, 1986 and 1989, all rights reserved, uh, made in USA. So there we go. So instruction book is is it's just basically a fold out sheet really, and it basically takes us through assembling the undercarriage, fitting the undercarriage bay into there. It's telling us to repeat it for the front. And then we're straight into here, we're fitting the bomb bay doors in. Now it's telling us not to cement them, I'm probably going to glue mine closed. Um, and then we've got the cockpit going together, we're going to fit the cockpit and the instrument panel into one side of the fuselage. Then we're going to put the um, landing gear in the other side. Then we're going to add the other bomb door. Then we're going to put some clear parts in here. Then we're going to go on and add the gun to the rear end, which is a nice touch. And then it's telling us to cement the fuselage halves together. Um, and we've got this in English, German, so Portuguese, French, Spanish. I'm not sure what that is. There's all these different languages, amazing. Um, and so follow this procedure to prevent the cement from drying before the halves can be put together. When cementing, use pieces of tape to hold a cemented seam together. Apply cement along top edge of right fuselage and nose to tail. Working quickly, attach left fuselage half. Slightly open bottom seam. Apply cement from nose to large doors. Finally cement edge from doors to the tail. And that's great. I mean, you don't get instructions like that anymore. And um, you'll see when we come to do this, I'll be using liquid cement. And I'll use the cocktail stick method. And what I'll do is... is um, glue like the nose, hold it together, let it go tacky, put a rubber band around it and then I'll put cocktail sticks in the fuselage and we'll go back and allow the glue to flow into the joint and that way we, we won't get any dry joints. Then we're going to go on here and putting the actuators in and landing the undercarriage doors. So basically we're going to build a complete fuselage and have it sat on its wheels. Straight into the wings, adding all the flaps, fitting the wings to the fuselage, putting the bomb bay, uh, the bomb bay in and then adding the drop tanks to the wings, building up the engines. And then we're going to come along here, we're going to build up our um, weapons pylons, put all our weapons on, build up so we've got some engines we can display, put on the uh, wingtip, um, the wingtip uh, undercarriage is the word I was looking for, um, adding the fins and the tail and everything, putting in the clear parts here, and then we've got this plastic loop we can use to hang it off, I don't know if I trust that, there's actually little loops moulded on the parts to hang it from, you'll see there. And then we've got our colour callouts here, FS numbers. Fantastic, even back in those days they were giving us FS numbers and then it's giving us all our decor locations here. So basically all very, very simple. 
um, and it's telling us here we've got to paint these lines on I think they're actually marked out on the plastic which is really old school um, if you're not old enough to remember years ago you used to get a, a raised line around like you here you get a raised line USAF to show where that goes and you get a raised line where the stars and bars go here it, absolutely incredible the way uh, plastic kits have come on in the years so um, there we go so that's the instructions out of the way so get these bags out so we've got our fuselage halves here as we can see we've got all um, all raised panel detail now when I come to build this kit you may find that the left hand fuselage I'm using a green one because I've got a green an old Ravel kit which I've been using as a bit of a buster um, I've done some practice with putting the the crease lines and everything in it so I could just fill them and, and make it good again um, we'll see uh, because I'd rather have a good model, uh, model clip, a good monogram model on the shelf rather than have one with two right hand fuselage halves so we shall see unfortunately I've cut the nose off the other one to, to try that um, conversion set so we'll see we'll see where we go but um, basically yeah, you can see this is all pretty scratched up these weren't actually bagged up I don't think in these days so um, and we've got all the raised panel in detail you can see this thing is huge where's the hair come from I don't have any hairs that long get off um, so basically uh, yeah I'll be building this up and I'm going to show you how to avoid damaging all these areas here when you when you start sanding um, I think these lines here show are there for black yes they are these raised lines here are just there to show you the black demarcation so we can sand them off but then here I can show you with stretch sprue how we're going to replace all the raised panel lines or we can just completely sand the panel lines off and have it smooth um, as I say this is a beginner's video I'm not going to be going through rescribing um, you know somebody who's just starting out that's it's a bit too much for them to be doing that so we'll see how we go I may use that green fuselage half I may not we'll see so there's the fuselage half so we've got some bags of sprue here we've got clear parts there I'll get them out of the way and then we've got here we've got our wings and I'll just get one pair out and you can see we've got some lovely flap detail in there for when the wings are um, all together some slats missing out of there or slots should I say and they've also got this wonderful wing system where everything goes in and they, the wings kind of interlock it's a very very clever system so uh, yeah you can see again we've got raised panel lines on there raised panel lines on the top we've got all the vortex generators back here I've got a feeling they should be further forward but never mind I think they moved all this didn't they and changed it on later versions separate spoilers which none of the other kits have separate flaps which only model collect have a um, bit of detail there inside the wheel well bays so yeah all very nice indeed proper positive locations for the engines and the pylons which model collect doesn't have and we've got a couple of big slots there for some reason for the um, for the wing tanks I guess the pylons quite wide so there we are all looking good then we can come into our sprues here so we can come along with a knife and cut the bag I'm not, I can't remember last time I cut a bag open now this cat I bought on eBay and for some reason it's got these wheels in it I don't know why uh, but the bags were still sealed um, but there was a small hole so the previous owner obviously put these in and when I got this kit the clear parts were actually missing so I've taken these from a spare kit or I may well use the um, or I'll have to buy the squadron um, the squadron um, what's it called vac form canopy from other models so we'll have to see so we've got flaps here again we've got lots of sink marks in them just like you get in the uh, model collect flaps but um, all the same we've got some internal detail on them and then we've got our wing tanks here as I say I'm not going to start fussing about internal details and stuff we'll get rid of the ejector pin marks but I'm not going to start adding detail or photo etc or anything like that this is a beginner's model video and this is going to be built as a plain out of the box beginner's model so I can go over there and we've got another sprue here um, these parts missing here I think are doors but there's also going to be some bits missing which were the parts for the engine sound um, you can see we've got some engine detail here these are the old Pratt & Whitney JT7s or JT9 engines whatever it was and then you've got the engine covers there with with internal detail so uh, yeah very nice touch there under carrier doors here which have come off the sprue so they're all cool um, Bombay there very very simple very simple um, interior detail but we have got decals for the for the instrument panel and the side panels there so 
you know, with a few red, pretty red headrests and stuff on the seats. Perhaps we'll put some uh, seat belts on with masking tape. But um, all in all, outer doors there for the wingtip undercarriage. Got some ejector pin marks in there we'll have to get rid of. All our engine pylons, rear gun parts there, instrument panel. We've got a, a pilot figure there, which we probably won't be using. Pito tubes. Uh, that's going to be part of the rear of the engine, I'm guessing. All very nicely done. At least it's got some panel lines on, which was more can be said for model collect. And then we've got here our Bombay doors, wingtip wheels. Another load of these with three of those in there. I don't know why they're in there. Um, and then we've got these flaps. And uh, yeah, everything else missing off that spruce. We've got some engine parts here, more gear, more gear doors. Again, we've got the interior detail there for the engine to show it open if you want to. So uh, there we go. And then there's a rear gun part there. It looks very similar to the model collect one, doesn't it? So that's that one there. And then we've got another bag here. I think the first thing to do with this is to get the wings and the fuselage out of the box and then we can reduce the box size down to something less than half the size. So what have we got here? We've got parts falling out of the bag. So we've got engine intakes there which look lovely. They do look very nice. Um, undercarriage gear, which uh, undercarriage legs which look very strong. Good enough for the job. Got lovely vortex generators on here on both sides of the um, tailplanes, which is more than can be said for another manufacturer. Wheel bay details here. Unfortunately, they've got this in both the front and the rear. So um, this, the model collect has the front in the front and the rear, and the AMT has it right. So um, yeah, basically the front should be flat, very complicated, lots of pipe work and stuff, and the rear should be like this. So yeah, engine detail there, which looks very lovely. It all looks so much nicer in the grey plastic than it does in the green. And then we've got a repeat sprue there with the stuff from the other side. And then we've got here two copy sprues and we've got here bombs for our wing pylons. So lots and lots of bombs to go on, they'll look lovely. We've got a wheel detail here which is for the time, for its age, is very very nice indeed. Wing spoilers there and then we've got our pylons with all our bomb racks on there. And then actuators, control columns and bits and pieces down there. I haven't seen any pilot seats. Ah, there we go. There's one. Are they on this sprue? Oh, there's one there, yeah. So it looks like um, with the base of the seats on the top, but yes, no. Yeah, well, I'm not sure. It looks like you actually don't get any seats. So it looks like we might have to put the pilot figures in. So we shall see. So um, anyway, so that's that. We've got some bits hanging off there. It looks like what we get is a base for the pilot seat. And then you get a pilot, let's have the instructions, that sits on a... Um, a peg in the floor. Yeah, so you don't actually get any seats, you only get an actual peg in the floor to sit the pilot on. So either we're going to have to make something to replace the bottom of the seat, or we're going to have to put the pilots in. Um, so I think we'll, we'll probably go down both roads and show you how it's done. So there we are, that's all that model there. As I say, decal sheet there, which is uh, very, very simple, probably knackered. We've got the clear parts here, which are all uh, okay. As I say, I've had to take these out of another kit, so may use these, may use the vac form. I'll probably use these because um, I'll probably save the vacuum for vac form for another project. So there we go, guys. I think I probably am going to swap that fuselage half over, and then what I'll do is I'll get the green one out, get it all reconditioned back so it's sort of standard, and then basically you can build along with me rather than have to wait for me to mess around with that. So um, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Um, sorry if this went on too long about the tools and everything, but basically you've now seen what the kit is all about, you've seen what the tools are about, you know what to go and get, you've seen the video I put out earlier today with all the different boxings. Um, there are a few on eBay, I see there's one in Ireland now, £50, but it's £25 postage, so that sort of kills it a bit. So um, see you all later, thanks for watching, bye for now.